Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It's a beautiful Wednesday. It's a, it's, a, it's a great day to be alive. Amen. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise? It's a beautiful day to be alive and to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. And so we're going to start off our Wednesday Bible night study um, with a word of prayer. And so right where you are, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. Um, Father, we come before your throne um, with thanksgiving, a thanksgiving heart, with a humble heart. We come to your throne as well boldly, Father, to ask for your grace, to seek your face, to come to you, Father. Um, Father, just because we need you and we need you more than ever before. And because every day, every single day, we wake up to the issues of life, to the chaos of life, to the things that follow that, that tries to take our strength, but because you are our strength. So Father, we can run to you. And so Father, we acknowledge you today, Father, as our Lord, as our Jehovah Jireh, as our, jo as our strength, as our Jehovah Rapha, our healer, our provider, we come before you because we know, Father, that without you, we can do nothing and that we are nothing. And so, Father, we pray, Father, that those things, Father, the, the, the evil one, the things that tries to get into our minds and our hearts, the, the depression, the, the, um, the, the hate, the things that comes from the social media and everything that comes, tries to invade our lives, um, the stress, the, the anger, and all of the negative things, the evil things that's come from the devil. Father, we come before you to ask you, Father, to put in us, Father, your word. Invade us with your word and the good things, Father, that comes from you. Your peace and your joy, um, your word that is like medicine to our spirit. Put into us laughter. Let us get good laughter for our soul, Father, because you said laughter is, is like medicine to our spirit and to our soul. And so, Father, we look to you, Father. For, for We look to you, Father. We look to you because you're our strength. We look to you, Father, because you're the author, the finisher of our faith. And so, Father, we, don't, we, can't, we can't look to anyone else but you because we need you. We need your covering. We need your peace. We need your, 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 we need your refuge. We need your strength. We need, we need everything that comes from you. And so, Father, tonight we ask, Father, for a special covering over our church, over the people of our church, over the members of our church, over the families of our church. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the peace of God, hallelujah, that your peace, Father, will invade our hearts and our lives and our minds. Because why? Because we, have act, because we are trying to keep every single day. We are trying our best, Father, to keep our minds focused on you. And you said that the peace of God that passes all the time will guard our hearts. And so I, I pray, Father, that you would invade us with your peace in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, Father, for a special covering as well. We pray that, Father, that you would put your angels, your angels that, that to, to be charged over us, Father, to keep us, Father, to keep us in, in our going and in and our coming, to keep us in all of our ways, to keep us in the grocery store, to keep us at the movies, to keep us at our jobs, to keep us in our schools, to keep us even in our homes, to keep us in our cars. We ask you for a special covering right now in the name of Jesus over the people of the church, Father, to keep us in all that ways because, Father, we need you. We want to depend on you. We want to dwell in you because, Father, again, without you, we are nothing and can do nothing. And so, Father, tonight, we draw near to you. Hallelujah. So that you can draw near to us. 
we, are, we want to abide in you. So, Father, that you can abide in us. And so, Father, I thank you, Father, that we can declare Psalms 91 over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And we thank you, Father, that these things may formed, but they will not prosper because of your divine protection over us. And so, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for sending your word right now to the people in the hospital, to the people in the church, to the people who are missing, to the people online. Send your word right where they need it right now in the name of Jesus. Send your word right now, right where they need it right now, in the hurting place, in the places that there may be depression or, or hurting or things that may not, may, may not be known to us. Send your word and save them from destruction right now in the name of Jesus. And because you said, Father, in the name of Jesus, that Father, that 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 your word will not return void. In the name of Jesus, that we, we can call upon you, that we can speak a thing and it shall come to pass. So, Father, we speak healing because it belongs to us. Belongs to us. You say that healing is the children's bread. And so, Father, I thank you, Father, that your word, Father, is medicine to our spirit. It is bread to us. It is meat to us. And we speak your word in the name of Jesus, that by your stripes we are healed. We have already been healed because it is our rightful place. And so, Father, tonight we are walking in your divine healing tonight. We are walking in your divine protection. We are walking in your divine covering. We are walking in your divine blessings and we are walking in your divine peace because it belongs to us and i thank you that every yes hallelujah is amen and we declare father i thank you father we declare that your word hallelujah that your word that will be preached tonight in the name of jesus will father we come into not stony hearts but good soil and i thank you father it will settle in us hallelujah and it will grow in us and it will take root in us in those areas that we are weak that we are struggling that where we need help that where we need strength and i thank you father that where we need healing and i thank you for the word that will be preached tonight in the name of jesus that it will take root hallelujah and then it will uproot those corruptible things father because your word is incorruptible and i thank you lord jesus hallelujah that your word will take root in those places in the dark places in the hurting places in the in the sick places take root right now in the name of jesus in the places that we need it the most and i thank you lord because of your blessed word, it will produce a fruit. <laughs> it will produce a fruit, a good fruit, a fruit, Father. Hallelujah. In its season. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father, for your blessings. I thank you, Father, for your blessings that is being speaking over us right now. That is being that will be speaking over us right now. That will be speaking over us right now. And I thank you, Father, for your covering over us in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we rest in you. We dwell in you. Because you are our God. Our Almighty. And so we dwell and rest in you. Because we in you. We can find rest. We can find peace. We can find joy. And we can find a friend. A real friend. And we can find love. A love. <laughs> that will never grow old. A perfected love. And so we thank you. Speak to our spirits. Speak to our hearts. Rest upon our lives. Be our God. Be our God. Be our refuge. And we declare that we will stand, hallelujah, equipped 
with everything that we need from you. You've already given us every, every tool to be equipped. Thank you for that. So that we can know the schemes of the devil. Thank you for, for the spirit of discernment. For teaching us and showing us the things that we need to see. So we can say, no, not that. This, not that, but this. Go home, stop, go back. Thank you for the spirit of discernment. And I pray that every believer here and online in this church will be invaded with your Holy Spirit of discernment because we need you. And so, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, for, for 60 seconds, let's go out in fellowship. Good evening. Praise the Lord. And welcome to Wednesday Bible Study. Thank you, Minister Lake, for leading us in our uh, time of prayer. I do want to make just one announcement before we, uh, before we uh, come with the word this evening. Um, our our um, family fun day is going to be July 22nd. <clears throat> I failed to mention last Sunday that uh, there's a sign-up sheet. If you and your family plan to attend, please make sure that you sign up. Uh, on, on the information table, just put how many people are coming from your family or your clan or whatever you call, call yourselves, right? Uh, and so that we can get a good, accurate count as to uh, how we can uh, make sure that we accommodate everybody. Amen? Uh, so please do that for us. For those of you who've never been to Camp Tuscoba, there is a, uh, there's a little strip of paper that has the, um, the, the address along uh, with the website, uh, so if you have any questions, right? So we're excited about the word tonight. Uh, Minister Susan Pace is going to come, and uh, and she's going to uh, deliver the word of God to us tonight. Uh, if you've not had an opportunity to grab a, uh, a study guide, uh, please go ahead and do so at this time. They're on the information table in the foyer. Uh, thank you, Minister Lake. I'll need one. I forgot to get one for myself. Uh, but uh, So go ahead and grab one. Excited about the word. Excited about the... Uh, the, the subject from which you'll teach tonight, amen. Uh, and so without further ado, we're going to call at this time Minister Susan Pace to the stage uh, and let's show her some of our high town love as she comes, right, um, to minister the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, Lord. In my purse, right there. It's in my purse. It's right there in the purse. Thank you. Good evening, church. Good evening, now, High Town Community Church family. How y'all doing today? Good. Y'all ready for the word? Amen, amen. God has given, a, given me a word for t this evening, and I just thank God for, for it, and I thank God that, uh, thank God for Pastor Cherry allowing me the opportunity to speak, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank God to my High Town Community Church family for coming out, and we just thank God for people who are watching via live screen, that they uh, will be helped tonight. I pray that we all will be helped, or we all will get something out from the Word. We can always get something from the Word, 
If we come in ready to receive something from the word, we can get something out of the word. If we open up our ears to hear what thus says the Lord or what the Lord has given to someone, to the person to speak. And tonight I thank God for this and I thank God that you all are here. And uh, we're going to go into it. The title for the lesson tonight is God's Word is Medicine. I repeat it again. God's Word is Medicine. It is so good to know this. It's so good to believe it. So think about it to, to know that His Word is Medicine to us. To us. And we can feast on his word and we can under, get, get a better understanding from him so it can help us yeah. in our everyday lives. Yeah. And with that being said, it's coming from Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. And it reads, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my word. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this day. We come thanking you uh, right now. Touch is only you can. Deliver, set free is only you can. I thank you, Father. Touch me. Touch Susan. Dip me down. And bring me back up, Lord. Let me share a word with the people that they can hear and receive the word that you have for us. We just give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this was when Pastor uh, asked me, I had thought on different things and couldn't think of none. Then finally, it, it, something, I, it came to me. The Lord came. It said, God's word is medicine. With all the stuff that was going on in the world today, we all got so much and here and there, up and down, all turnarounds and everything. And we have to remember to feast on the word of God. No matter what's happening in this world today, we got to, we the believers, we the church, we the people of the most high God have to remember that. And in this lesson right here, uh, it was King's, in Proverbs, King Solomon was talking to his son, to the daughter, talking to the people, talking to a young person or whatever, per the scripture. But they, we got to know that he was talking to us too. Even today, he, he was talking to us when, he, when, this, uh, when they did this proverb. You know, he's an he's a author of this and He's good. He's so good. He understands because he, Proverbs is the book of wisdom, and we understand that, and we know that we can get so much wisdom for, from it. You know, I already know that. There's 31 days in a month, 30, 28. <laughs> so you know you can go to a proverb and read it every day, and we can gain some wisdom from the Proverbs. But this particular passage I just thought it was so interesting as I was studying and everything. Uh, as I have read the, the 20 through 22, we're really going to focus mostly on 22, though. And in, 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 in the 20 and 21, he is just, it's really a teachable moment that he is sharing with the son or with this person that we have to remember. And it has already been stated in the Bible, back in Deuteronomy, you know, uh, keep these words, keep them, hang them, put them on the doorpost, put them on you, hang them around you. In the New Testament, in the Old Testament, we already know this, that God said, attend to my word, listen to my word, keep my word. I don't want you to turn away from it. I want you to get this word, get it in you. Let it seek in you, let it come from you. Uh, Psalms 1 and 1, meditate on the words day and night. And we have to do those things. We as believers have to meditate on the word. We have to know the word and we have to seek it for ourselves. We do not let them out of our sight. We have to keep them in our hearts. When we seek the word and study the word, meditate on the word, it'll get down in your heart. So when you don't have the word with you, then you'll still be able to share the word. The word will come out of you when you have it in you. So we have to remember those things and know that uh, when we study and, and, and keep feasting on the word of God, uh, even with the things that is going on around us, you know, we have to remember that. Why do we need to remember that? Because it, it's the word of God. Amen. God's word still stands. Yeah. It's not going nowhere. Heaven and hell can pass away, but it say what? 
God's word is going to stand. It will not pay. It will not fade away. And we have to thank God for that and let it, let it be known that this is something that we can learn from, go from, and be teach from. Um, he was telling us, pay attention. He, he's just like a parent telling our children, pay attention to what I'm saying. Hey, don't get distracted by that. You know, don't let this thing that's going on uh, around us in the world, you know, turn you away from the Word of God because we need the Word of God and we need it even more so today. If, it ever, if we ever need it, <laughs> we'd have heard this before, we need it even the more today. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them with you. Hang them around your neck. Meditate on it. And then you will have it. But our focus is going to be on verse 22. For they are life to those that find them, that you seek them, that you study them, and then they are health to the whole body. So the, med the word health is your medicine, or medicine is your health. And when I focused on that, I thought about it. What do we do when we're not feeling well, when we are sick? What are we, we going to do? We can talk back now. We can talk back. Where do we go? Where do we go when we're not feeling well? To the doctor. To the, to the doctor. Nine times out of ten, the first thing we're going to do is call the doctor. And that's the right thing to do. Nothing wrong with that. That's what we do. But it, if you look at this verse, it says, for they are life to those that find them and health to, the, to what a person's, what part of his body? The whole body. Not just part of the body. Not half of the body. Not some of the body. Not the arms, not the leg, but his whole body. And we have to be thankful for that. And we have to know that, that his word, God's word, is going to heal us. It can heal us. It can make us better know. It can make us feel better. It, the God word is medicine to make us feel better, to know that God said he's with us, he's not against us. We have to remember that and we have to know that. So when we uh, think of that and we go and we have to go to the doctor and what do we do when we go to the doctor? Uh, what does the doctor, excuse me, what does the doctor do first? He's he going to say what? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why you come in? Now they going to ask you that, you know, they can put a little script right on the, on the, on the uh, little pad for him. So when he come in or they type it in for him, not feeling well, knee hurt, back hurt, whatever it is. And then doctor, you go in, you see the doctor, he going to ask you, okay, if I touch you here, does that hurt? Yeah. How much, what's your pain? From, from one to ten, is it good or bad? And then we answer him. We'll tell him what, what we're feeling. And then he's going to ask you, well, how long you been having this pain? How, how deep uh, it was it bothering you? Do it come and go. You know, and we're going to answer the questions to what he's asking us. So we have to remember that we're talking to the doctor. <laughs> and it's all good. we got to talk to the doctor. We have to let him know what, what, why we're here. So because we're talking to the doctor, then he's going to do what? He's going to give you a diagnosis. He's going to give us a diagnosis based on what he said, what we said, based on him checking us out, touching us and everything. And then he's going to give us a diagnosis. He's going he gonna to say, usually, I ain't going to say he say, usually he's going to give you what? Write you out of what? A uh, prescription. <laughs> usually you're going to take a little pill or take some pills, okay? And then he'll tell you, on the prescription, it tells you what? When to take it, it tells you for how long to take it, how often you should take it, you know, what is, what's going to happen with it, whatever, if, when you're taking the medicine and everything. So we ought to follow the instructions that's on the medicine bottle. Correct? That's if we want to feel better, all right? Okay, and then let's say we do that. We will do that. We're going to take the medicine. Then he tells you, if you don't feel better in a what? A week or two, a couple weeks, you do what? You come back or call my office. Speak to the nurse. What they going to do? Speak to the nurse. Tell the doctor you don't feel any better? What's going to happen? You know, but that's what happens. That's, that's what's going on. And nothing is wrong with that. I'm not making fun of it. I'm not making light of it. Don't get me wrong. This is for real. This is the world and the society that we do live in. Then we do that. Okay, we call back. And sometimes we know we don't get better in two weeks. We're not feeling better. The pain is still there or something else is going on. What could be, you know, with the medicine we're taking, there could be some what? Side effects. 
What could be some side effects? Oh, okay, we don't have a mic. What could be some side effects? Any? Dizziness? You got the headache part? And you don't get better? You could have a reaction to the medicine? Yeah, huh? All those kind of things can happen, okay? And when you're dizzy, you can't drive, or you got to take it on a, on a, uh, with some food. You can't take it on an empty stomach. Oh, no, you can't do that. Because it's going to cause more reaction. I'm going to cause some bad reaction to it. And then on top of that, what about huh, the cost? <laughs> oh, I had got a medicine. I had a little knee pain or <laughs> something. And the lady going to prescribe a prescription for me? I know it was my foot or something. But she going to, when, when I called it in, I went to get it. I was almost $50, $46. I said, don't hurt that bad. <laughs> I, I, that, my knee, my knee ain't hurting that bad. And then I, I started looking around, you know, before all my other mouths, and I'm okay with it, you know, the highest neighbor 20, I can deal with that. Then $4 to $6 for one medicine that I never had before? Don't know what's going to happen? That's all, no. You know, I, I'm okay. I got a little insurance. Ain't no big thing. You know, I said ain't no big thing. Oh, but they, one day a good RX card came to my house. I had never looked at it, I had never moved it. I just kept moving from one place to another. When I got that prescription for $46, oh, I started calling good RX. <laughs> you best believe it. See, can we get this down some? Because uh, medicine costs. It really does. So those are some of the side effects. Those are things that could happen when we uh, have to take medicine, when we go to the doctor, when we're not feeling well. Okay, uh, but that's okay. Because there's always a remedy. There's always something we can do now. But we, coming to Bible study, what can we do? So what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to go over three, um, three things that um, can help us, that will be able to help us. Um, the first one, and based on what the, the title of our lesson is God's word is medicine to us. And in my Bible that I read, it says that the best physician is who? Jesus. Or the great physician is who? Jesus. And I have a question for us. When we're not feeling well, before we go to the doctor, sometimes, or things going on, do we call on the great physician? Do we call on Jesus before we go to the doctor, before we make that appointment? And maybe sometimes we do. I'm not going to say we don't. Maybe sometimes we do. And maybe sometimes we don't. But tonight the lesson is about God's word is medicine. It's medicine for us. And tonight we will be studying three areas where I just picked out three. Oh, God gave me three. I mean, I picked it out. No, don't say that. He gave me three areas that we can think about or use to know that God's word can help us. It's not to say that it'll cure us. A uh, little disclaimer, I ain't saying it's going to cure us. But these are God's word that can help us in our time of not feeling well and sometimes in illness and sickness. Then these are things that we can feast on. I remember now. Solomon was telling his child or telling the people. And uh, what I was saying before, it's for the young and for the old. It's for the time right now. Sometimes we have to go back to messages we heard or things that we already heard to know that. Sometimes we forget. I, you know, in this busy world, things happen. And we have to remember that, yes, God's word is still real. God's word is still alive, even in today's society. And we have to remember that. And it's sometimes, it's sometimes it's good to have a reminder or a fresher course to know that he's still with us and he said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we're going to look at three areas. The first being the mind. Oh, the mind. With all the things that's happening, the mind. Huh. Mm, the mind is a powerful thing. You know, everything begins in the mind. Good, bad, or indifferent. It starts in the mind. And we have to be ready to receive, uh, to know that we can help our mind, help ourselves to help the mind. 
Because with all the stuff that is happening in the world today, wars, <laughs> rumors of wars, they're going to start a war, they're going to get, the, they about to got Putin this week, wasn't it? They're going to get him. You know, all this kind of stuff. But we have to remember that it's in the mind that these things start. It's in the mind that things happen. And it affects us. You know, it can affect us. It can make us worry and everything. With all the things that's happening within the world, you know, all the things that's happening to us with our jobs, up and down, come and go, with our children, things happening with them that we don't know. And some things we know, some things we don't know. But we are constantly praying for them, that they do right and things will be all right. Surround them, Lord, with your love and your protection, with your armor, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you keep us, that you're keeping them. With our spouses, with our significant other, things happen. We have a tendency to worry. And then God said he don't want us to worry. It's in the scripture tonight. It said he don't want that for us. But that's why we have to be mindful. That's why we have to remember God's word is medicine. So when we do feel bad, and not to say it won't, that, it, that we always going to feel good. No, we don't. Things happen. Those fiery darts come. So when they do come, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? In our verse here tonight, it tells us the mind has, every, has starts with everything, good or bad. But one verse I want you to remember also, in the mind, it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to change our mind. We have to change some of the thinking that we have on, not the just say the thinking, but we have to change all the stuff that's coming in to us, all the stuff that we listen to, whether we listen to the TV or don't listen to the TV, or in your neighborhood, you can hear a siren go, or as you're driving, you're going to work, you see an accident, you see different things happening, so we have to be mindful of that. We have, it's in our mind. We see it. We can't stop it. We have to be ready for it when things do happen. We're not going to bow down to it and say, oh, woe is me. But we have to go to the word of God. And when we go to the word of God in Romans 12 and 2, it tells us we ought to renew our mind. We ought to change our mind, transform our mind by renewing it. How do we go renew it? What are we going to do? Are we getting all this information that's no good, that's garbage? So how do we transform? How do we change our mind? What, did, what are we going to do? Say it louder. Through the, Through the word of God. Amen. And one way we could do it, now we have several scriptures, but I just use a few just to help us. It says that Galatians 3 and 2. What are we going to do? Set our mind on things above and not on these earthly things. Because if, if we kept our minds on the earthly thing, we'll stay down. Yep. It is, it be, it's so much that's coming at us for different things, for different reasons. It's no reason to look up and be happy. Yeah. Per the world, is no reason. But, hmm, but there is a reason to be happy. Yeah. Because we're the church of the Most High God. Yeah. And we know that God sits on the throne and he sits high, but he looks Low, and he's still in control. And, his, and in the word it says, to set your things, set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth, not on the things that we see in the news every day, not even on the things we get from a bad report when the children come home and say something, or your, uh, 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 your husband, spouse come home and say things ain't are you right, there's something going with that. It's okay. It's okay because God has a word that will take care of all of that. God has a word that can heal that. God has a word for us that we can use in a time when things are happening all around us, that we don't have to be focused on it, that it don't have to draw, a, draw us away from our everyday living to be focused on it, to be humdrum, down and out, worrying about stuff that we can't even control. Amen. God grant me the serenity, the serenity prayer. My sister loved that prayer. She said she had it all the time on her job, because things happen on your job that you have no control over. 
But, Lord, I got to have a peace when I go up in this place. I got to go do this job. I got to have peace. What can I have peace with then? I got to have your word with me. I got to have something that I can use each and every day that I can fight with, that I can use on my job. When I leave home, when I step out, when I step on that job, I got to have something that I'm ready to say to the enemy. Oh, because he's going to come. He's going to send them darts. Now, can we be a, <clears throat> can we be a, a super person? Uh, the, knock them back? You got our shield? Do we have it with us all the time? We got to have it in us. Even though the stuff happened in the mind, we got to have it in our heart. So it, all the time, we ain't walking around toting the Bible as we go to work. Not everybody that they can see it. Because sometimes we want to put it down. We don't want them to know, oh, we got a Bible. But you got it in here, oh, it'll come out. Say, greatest he that's in me than he that's in this, in this office. I ain't worried about him. Because I know someone that can handle whatever the situation is. My God, he's bigger and better, better than any of them. He is good. He knows all about it. He knew about it before I knew about it. And he said, I got something for it. I can handle it. I'm your father. I'm your father. I got the shoulders. Bring it on. I got my arms big enough to wrap around you. It's okay. I got you. I can fight your battle. That little bit of battle you worried about with them people in that job. Oh, that ain't nothing to him. That ain't nothing compared to what our God can do for you and through you when he used you to set them down. Amen. I'll tell you, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God. I thank you, Father. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth. Don't get, don't be, get hung up with them. Don't even be worrying about that. We got to be rooted and grounded in the Lord. Yeah. We got to, even in this time, even the more. We got to have something. We got to have some scriptures or something around us, in us, on us. <laughs> that we can let it come out of us when we need it. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. And then also, be ready, because Philippians 4 and 8 says, and now, my dear brother and sister, one final thing he was telling before, fix your thought on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely and admirable. What is, some of them say, was a good report, okay? We ought to think on these things. Worthy things, things that are praise. Not all this garbage that they dishing out, throwing out the fire dots coming, that's no good, that they ain't worth talking about, gossiping. We don't need that. Not us, not the children of the most high God. Sometimes we got to go in there, and, oh yeah, girl, I see you ain't going in and close your door. Because you don't need that, you don't need that. Remember, this is in the mind. If you're talking to people, it's going to get in your mind. You don't want that in your mind. You want things that is a good report. We want to think of things that is good and not as bad. We got enough of that going on anyhow. Anyway, we don't need that. Not in our spirit. Let me see. Okay. All right. And then 2 Timothy 1 7. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but it gives us power. Love and self-discipline. Amen? Amen. It does not have the spirit of God. I don't have no fear. No fear. We got no fear. Sometimes we do, though. We cower down sometimes. So we, you know, are we around and we'll cower down. <clears throat> and then we, when we get in the office, it's okay, God, forgive me. You know, I ain't standing up that time. But Lord, help me. Help me the next time. But that's why God's word is medicine. So now we got a few little scriptures that we can take with us. So we can have come to Bible study so we can learn. It's okay. We don't get it right all the time. We can talk to the Lord and go back and Lord. Uh, God's going to give us another opportunity to, to stand up for him. It's okay, but we got to be ready. We do have to let people know that we're the church of the most high God. We got something to say about certain things. We, we ain't scared. We ain't timid. We ain't even to bow down to them. We're going to hold our head up and we're going to speak the word of God and let the truth come out. Let it be told how good he is. We already know how good he is to us. We know what he's already done for us. We have to remember that and feast on those things. Think on those things. Amen, amen. We have to remember that and keep it going. We have to keep our focus on those things and look at that and know that our mind is being renewed 
day by day, or we should be renewing it day by day, thinking on the things of above and of a good report that we're not timid, we're not afraid, we're not going to back down. That it's God is in us, and he needs, it is God that is with us, and it's God's medicine of his word that we are using, that will be our shield and our buckle when we need it. It'll come out. We have to stand for it and know that God said, I will be with you no matter what. I'm with you. Amen, amen. Now, then we're going to move over to your, to your, to the body. Oh, to the body. We all want our body to look good. Or we want to go pump some iron, <laughs> work on them barbells and whatever. We're going to go work out. What is they Wednesday? I mean, too. I went walking. I do a little aerobics. They okay. It's okay. We want to be looking good. We want to keep our body good. Nothing wrong with that. That's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to do that. Uh, be, have our body together for the Lord. We want a good body. Not just a physical thing. But we also got to be ready for the Lord with his word to share the good news. So we want to be looking good in our bodies and we're doing all the things we need to do. But let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 19 and 20 from the uh, Good News Bible. Do you know that your body are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Uh, you are not your own. You were bought with the price. So therefore, honor God with our bodies. Amen, amen. We are to honor God with our bodies. Yes, it's a physical thing too, but it's also a spiritual thing. We do the things of this world that look good and go work out and nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. Because at my age, I want to keep on being able to move. I move now. But well, we want to, these are, our bodies are a temple. And we do have to move, but we got to watch what we put in it. We can't be doing any old thing and, and thinking it's okay and think we're going to be able to move and do some work for the Lord. He, want us, he don't want us sluggish. We go on them jobs and we do all this stuff. Hey, yes, you want us to need anything else I can do for you? Are oh, we asking the Lord, is there anything I can do today? What can I do today, Lord? Who can I touch today, Lord? Who can I help today, Lord? But if we ain't can't move, <laughs> what good are we? What good are we to the kingdom? We got to keep our bodies right. We got to have our bodies ready to go out because we need, we, Pastor said, get ready, get ready because we got a whole lot to do. We ain't make this church look good. You know, we got some work to do. So we got to be ready to go out and share the good news with the people. But we got to be ready to go out there and be stepping. Let's go. Let's go. You ready to go? Are you ready to go? Now we be ready on July 22nd for that. Uh, and family day, won't we? Well, we got to be ready before then and after then. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong, but we got to have our body. This is our temple. On a serious note, you all, these are, this is our temple. God gave it to us. He hung on the cross for us. We got to be ready to do his work. We got to be ready to do his will. It says in the body, is anyone sick among us? We're going to call the elders of the church to anoint them, to anoint the body in the name of Jesus. We've got to be ready to go out to do the work of the Lord, to do what he has commissioned, he has called us to do, not just Pastor Cherry, not just the ministers, not just uh, certain people, certain ones. It's for all of us that we can participate in this, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Hey, man, we ain't got to just wait till we on a, on a mission to doing this, knocking on doors or whatever. But we can tell them about it all the time on our jobs. We can tell them the good news of Jesus Christ, what he has done. Don't try to tell what he did for somebody else. All you got to do is tell them what he did for you. Because he woke you up this morning. You can walk into this job. Some people can't. Or whatever it is, tell our family members. Not just you, me too. We got to keep on sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, but we got to have our bodies together so we can do that. If we go broke down, they're going to, yeah, they might say, yeah, that look, yeah. Keep it ready. Be ready. Be you ready to share so we can know and let it be known that we are. And then look at Proverbs uh, 16, 22. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bone. 
gracious word. That goes again back to the mind also. All this is tied in together. The mind, the body, and then we talk about so all together. Gracious word, because we are the children of the Most High, we don't want to say things bad anyway. We, even though sometimes we might need to, but we're not, that's not us. We have to be show compassion. Gracious words, honeycomb sweet to the taste. We have to learn how to deliver the word to someone. We don't want to beat them over the head. We don't have to walk around uh, toting the Bible and, and read it to. But we have to have gracious word. By us reading the words, reading the Proverbs, that we'll know some good words to come out. Good words to come out of our mouth that we're not trying to beat somebody over the head or we're not trying to condemn them and tell them what, what, does, what you need to be doing, said the Lord. But hey, remember, we was all there too. We have to remember that, that we were not always at the High Town Community Church, sitting in the pews, doing our ministries. We was out there also. So we have to have the word in us and gracious word, gracious word to share with people. So we want to bring them in to help them to learn to know that God's word is medicine. It can help us. It's for us. It's not against us. Amen. Amen. And then we want to talk about the soul. Mm. Our soul. Mm. The soul. It's a spirit. It's a living being. The soul speaks to your thoughts, your emotions, your dreams. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. We have those thoughts, dreams, and, and, and aspirations. But the spirit relates to God with our faith, our hope and our character to say are compassionate. Again, the mind, the body, and the soul is working together. And that's what we have to remember and know that all of this is working together for the good. We have to put it all together, not just pick out certain parts and parts that we want, but we have to know this. We have our, our emotions and dreams. There's nothing wrong with the emotions and dreams. But are they lining up with what the Word of God says? What God, have we talked to the Lord about what he wants for us? Do we ask the Lord, what's, what's, your, what's the assignment? What's my purpose? Do we talk to him? Do we go in our own closet to find out what he want us to do, how he want us to do it? Those are the things we have to do and be mindful of it. But then when we do that and do that and asking for ourselves because those are emotions, then that spirit man going to come in because we've got a relationship with God. Then he's going to start sharing with you and telling you which, which way, thus this way, that way, turn this way, go that way. And we ought to listen to the Lord to know which way he will have us to go, he, to know the things that he, have, that he has for us, things of good and not of evil. Right. Jeremiah 29 and 11 for the inspected in. Yeah. He wants us to all, he wants all his children to be ready to step on in, to have a good life, huh? that he don't want us not to have nothing. He's not saying that, but we have to go to him. We have to know that God's word is medicine to our mind, our bodies, and our souls. We have to remember that. And in our, our scriptures, some scriptures for those, it speaks to <clears throat> Psalms 119 and 5. Your word is a light, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. For the spirit man, we are to feast on him, to know that we're going to look to the Lord, not in our own, but we're looking to him. So his word going to light our path, going to give us the direction, which way we should go. Yes. Turn to the left, turn to the right. Go straight. Go straight, Susan. Go straight. I got it for you over there. Go straight. Hang in there. Then he let us know also that, <clears throat> Psalms 143, 147, and 3. He heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up our wounds. Even That's in our spirit man now. That's the spirit man. Because as things are happening, even though it happened in our mind, our spirits get down sometimes. But God say, my word, God's word, is good enough to fill us up, to feed, to feed us, to let us know that he said, He's still with us no matter what. He said, the heaven and earth don't pass, but my word will not fade away. We, we, we got to know this, though. 
We got to know this. We got to have it down in us to know that no matter what, even in my spirit, man, even in my soul, that I'm not feeling the best. And we don't have good days all day, every day. It's not 100% all the time. Sometimes we are up and sometimes we're down. Sometimes we do get some bad news. But we still got to know that God said his word is the medicine for our soul. His word is what we can feast on. His word is what we can dive into. His word is, is there for us to lift us up and not pull us down, to make us feel better about ourselves. Amen. And you already know Psalm 23 and 1, because the Lord is my shepherd, and we shall not want for nothing. He's going to take care of us even through it all. No matter what, he said he's always, 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 always with us. Okay, where you go? To the top of the mountain, to the lowest valley, to the deepest sea, in the ocean. It doesn't matter. God is there. He's there for us. He's there with his loving arms of protection all around us, no matter what we've done, no matter which way we go. He still said he loves us just that much, that he cares about us just that much, that he owns nothing, nothing to happen to us. That's why we have to keep and remind, remind ourselves and know these things about him. This is why we have to get into the word and know his word for ourselves. So we can share with the young people, the younger people. Tend to my word. Listen to what I'm saying. Turn your ears this way, my child. Don't turn your back. Turn this way so you can know and understand. And then you already know, John 10:10. 10, 10, the, the thief comes to what? Steal, to kill, and destroy. But not our God. God say, I come that you may have life, and you're going to have it more abundantly. Better than you could even imagine. Better than you thought you could. And that's what we have to feast on. Even when we get down, we have to remember and know that, that God said he's for us and not against us. And then uh, the last one is Jeremiah 8 and 10. <laughs> Make me want to shout. Hey, the joy of the Lord is my strength. No matter what. God's joy, the joy of the Lord, not man, not that job, not the house I have, not that piece of car, not that brand new car, yeah. but the joy of the Lord, because all that can be taken away. And how would you feel then? Oh, you'll be down. You'll be a little hurt. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better to know that this is what thus says the Lord. So, you remember we had some side effects with the other stuff? <laughs> we got any side effects here? <laughs> no side effects. Don't cost nothing. It's free. And you can take it with you wherever you go, on a full stomach, on an empty stomach. And when you work out at the gym, when you're walking down the street, when you're doing that jogging, you can have it right with you. You can take it all with you. Hey, hey, say, greatest heat is in me. Hey. Say, I'm above and not, the, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. <laughs> the enemy, I step all on you, <laughs> Satan. Get thee, get thee behind me, Satan. Because that's what thus says the word. We got to know this. We got to know it. We got to focus on it. We got to keep it. So after hearing all this, I hope you feel better. You got to feel a little better. I feel good. Because Nehemiah, <laughs> it did that thing. But we have to remember, when we say these scriptures, we still start feeling better. But we have to remember to speak positive, Remember to speak some affirmation, okay? And we want them to always, the affirmation could be the Word of God, always. You can have some other ones, but the Word of God, it never fails. It's always good, and it always makes me feel better. Thank you all, and I'll turn it back over to Pastor Cherry. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Anybody feel better tonight? <clears throat> That's what the Word of God does. It makes us uh, feel better. It encourages us uh, and it inspires us. And I hope and pray that you're just that tonight, that you're encouraged, that, that you feel better. Anybody feel better? 
I'm looking. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Minister uh, Pace, uh, for blessing us. Amen. Uh, praise God. A good word, a good encouraging word for us this evening. Amen. I'm going to ask, uh, b before, we, uh, before we pray, because I do want us to pray. In fact, I'm going to ask us to come and pray. I'm going to ask us to come and pray. And I know that we prayed already, but I'm going to ask that you come and pray with me at the altar tonight. Amen. Uh, we thank God we had a good word, a challenging word tonight. And uh, so let's, let's, so to speak, let's seal the deal with a closing prayer. Amen. We do know, I asked earlier, uh, for those of you who uh, will, uh, who, who are going to be participating in our, um, who's going to be participating in our um, uh, uh, family fun day on July 22nd, begin at 11 o'clock, uh, we need you to sign up if you're going to be, you and your family is going to be there so that we can make sure that we can accommodate everybody. And we thank God for you. Amen. Uh, let's get the word. Uh, Minister Pace is so right, <clears throat> but we need the word of God. Our children need the word of God. We need to feast on it, right? We really and truly need to feast on the word. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We magnify you. We thank you, dear God, for what our ears did here tonight. We thank you for, uh, uh, for Minister Pace, uh, the words that she spoke to us, words that are encouraging to us, words that have lifted us, and also words that have challenged us. Father, we know that there's so much going on in our world. Uh, it is a mean world that we live in. It's a, a cruel world. It is a world that, that oftentimes makes us sick, dear God. But we thank you that, that there's a cure for the world, uh, and that is your word. We thank you, dear God, that your word makes us feel better. It, it makes us act better. It makes us do better and it helps us to be better and we thank you for that dear God and we just declare tonight that the world is no match for your word we can put your word up against anything we can put your word up against our physical ailments we can put uh, your word up against uh, mental illness we can put your word up against our enemies and everything that's going on around me around us and expect and know that the word wins out each and every time and so we know that your word is good like medicine I pray that you forgive us because oftentimes we go through uh, oftentimes we, we we act like we're forgotten stepchildren oftentimes we suffer lack and loss and pain even uh, because we don't take you at your word dear God and I pray right now tonight that we'll begin to do that that we will begin to ingest your word that we will become so serious and so focused that your word will become part of everything that we do every aspect of our lives that we will feast on your word that we will say to you Lord feed us until we want no more and why will we eat your word why will we feed and feast on your word because we know that your word is like medicine it is your word that heals us and helps us it is your word that lifts us up it is your word that picks us up it is your word that encourages us to go on to see what the end is going to be like it is your word to God that develops us you said that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God so your word strengthens our faith increases our faith your word helps us to believe that we can do all things we can be whatever you've caused us to be. I thank you, dear God, that we have power through your word. We have strength to overcome uh, through your word and that we are more than conquerors because of your word. I thank you for every person standing, standing before us tonight, dear God, uh, in this house, those who, are, who came to this altar, dear God. You're able to meet and to grant each and every one of our requests and we say thank you. You know what we have need of even before we ask you and we thank you dear God because you are a good father you are a good father not just a good father but you are our good father you are a faithful father you've been faithful to us uh, from the very beginning and from the time we came into this world uh, up into this present time you've been faithful to us you've been good to us you've walked with us you've protected us you've shielded us you've guided us you've loved us you've lifted us you prayed over us you prayed for us you stepped in for us you shielded us you went to battle for us and we just want to say thank you father thank you for being for us and not being against us and I thank you dear God that as we draw near to you you will draw near to us as we continue to uh, to, uh, to eat and feast off of your word dear God 
as we take your word serious, dear God, as we keep your word before our eyes, it will be medicine for us, and it will be medicine to us. And I say thank you. We say thank you. What a glorious God you are. We thank you for giving to us something that's free, that's not, that does not cost cost us anything. We thank you, dear God, that we don't have to wait until the clinic or to the doctor office open up, dear God. We have access to you, uh, and we have access to your word, and we thank you that it never gives any bad negative side effects, as Minister Pay said, but it only does us good, and it only helps us. And we say thank you, dear God. Uh, saturate us with your word. Help us to saturate ourselves with your word, and to saturate our hearts, dear God, with your word, that it may be well with us. We thank you, dear God. Thank you for the message. Thank you for Minister Pace. We pray that you will continue to bless her and strengthen her, dear God. I pray that she will be encouraged, dear God. I thank you, uh, heaven, that you're looking down and you're smiling and that you're proud of her and, and how she blessed us. And we say thank you, dear God. Thank you for every person under the sound of my voice, those who are at home, dear God, who couldn't make it for whatever reason, watch them via live stream. We thank you that your blessings flow even to them, uh, dear God, and that we're strengthened by our mighty God. And Father, now as we leave this place tonight, but never your presence, we ask that you go with us and stand by us and that you would keep your loving arms of protection around us and bless us according to the word that we put on the inside of us. And if we do that, there, there's no limit to how high we can go, how far we can go, and how deep we can go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord praise and glory. Amen. Praise God. You may return to your seats. Uh, before we dismiss, we just thank God. Thank you again, Minister Pace. Uh, thank you, Hightown, for coming out tonight, being a part of our services. Do we have any other announcements before we dismiss tonight? Any announcements, anybody? Praise the Lord. Don't forget, as you leave in tonight, if you plan to attend our family fun day, I'll need you to, to sign up and let us know how many family members uh, will be attending. You are dismissed only after you say this. After you say this, I will feast on the Word of God, which is good medicine, to my mind, my body, and my soul. Amen. You're dismissed in the presence of the Lord.